Today, I will recover 18650 lithium cells from old laptop batteries. This enormous pack of dead laptop batteries will be the main ingredient. There are a lot of ways to get them, from a PC shop, from eBay, from a local dump. Just move your ass and find them. Some tools are required. I work best with cable nippers. Find a tool more suitable to you. I also recommend a hammer and a screwdriver, for convenience. Now there's me, a ton of laptop batteries and my brute force. What is this? A Mac U? A MacBook rechargeable battery? No! No! What the fuck? I'm done. Sadly, nothing exploded. That battery was discharged completely. Back to us. After opening a battery, there are usually 6 18650 lithium cells with some electronics. All cells are connected together with metal strips. That has to be removed carefully, without compromising the integrity of the housing. Keep in mind that this process will quickly degenerate into a big mess. So you begin with a battery, remove the plastic housing, remove all electronics, remove metal connections, and you will end up with a bare lithium cells ready to be tested. After two hours of work, I get over 200 cells that were accurately controlled by my cat. With the next step, I have separated all cells by voltage. I have considered good cells with voltage higher than 2.8 volts and bad cells with lower voltage. After that, I have labeled them as dead cells or good cells. I will check all cells capacity anyway. For this recycling process, I bought some 18650 battery holders and I found that not all holders are suitable for this work. For example, that one with a spring don't offer the same contact pressure as the other one, resulting in a higher contact resistance or even not connection at all, without saying that the cell is nearly impossible to remove by hand. For testing, I soldered a dense stick connector to a cable and to the holder to ensure no voltage drop during charging and discharging process. After plugging everything in, I set my charger to 1 amp, charging just one cell. The charging process took over 4 hours. Keep in mind that the cell must not heat up, otherwise it's a sign of an overused or a bad cell. In that lapse of time, I have separated all remaining cells by voltage. The next step 
after checking if the voltage did not drop significantly, is to discharge it to check the effective capacity. I have noticed a voltage drop of 200 mV between the cell and the charger. This is not a big deal, because when reaching the discharge voltage, the charger reduces the discharge current, reducing the voltage drop. After a discharge process is complete, the charger gives the measured capacity that I have reported onto the cell. And this is how I recover these 18650 lithium battery cells. You have to charge them completely. Keep an eye on temperatures, because if they overheat, they could even explode, and this is a sign of a bad cell, there's something wrong inside. After a full charge, you have to leave them alone for 2 or 3 days. After that, you have to check the voltage, and if it drops significantly, there's something wrong inside. After that, you have to check the capacity, discharging them completely to roughly 3 volts. After that, it's up to you if the capacity shown is good for your application or not. But what's the problem? I've got only one charger and it takes over 8 hours to check just one cell and I've got over 200 cells, it will take over half a year to check them all. So in my help, check this video where I'll show you how to build an 8650 lithium battery charger that will help me a lot with recycle this cell. Like, leave a comment, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.